thank you very much. It's a great honor to give this talk for Professor Kashiwara 70th anniversary. So, um, uh, this is a joint work with uh, Anthony Blanc, uh, Bertrand Thorin, and Gabriele Vizzozzi. And uh, later today, in the afternoon, Gabriele Vizzozzi will uh, speak about uh, uh, a continuation of this work uh, with the collaboration between him and, and Bertrand Thorin. So, this uh, talk is essentially an introduction to a project that is, is going on. And I will talk about a particular result that then later it's going to be used. So, uh, the talk is about motivic realization of DG categories of singularities and vanishing cycles. So, I'll have to speak a bit uh, about both sides. So, in the end, uh, we'll state that a comparison between these two objects. So, I'll have to define what are motivic realizations of DG categories uh, and remind a bit about the formalism of vanishing cycles. So here's the plan for the talk. I will start with some motivations and, uh, and I will state the main result in a, in a preliminary form. Then I will uh, uh, re make some uh, reminds on DG categories of singularities and matrix factorizations and, and then uh, this is the core of the talk, this, the construction of these motivic realizations and then the comparison with vanishing cycles. So, just a bit of motivation, so these categories of singularities. So, if we start with a scheme, under some hypothesis, um, we have uh, an inclusion of DG categories. Uh, from one side, we're going to have perfect complexes on the scheme, which are the compact objects in drive category with quasi-coherent cohomology. And uh, this lives inside uh, bounded coherent uh, sheaves uh, on Z. And uh, so the first uh, important uh, result that uh, is, uh, underlies all this story is this theorem of Serre, then formulated in a different way by Thomason, that uh, Z is regular if and only if this inclusion is an equivalence. Okay, so this tells us that uh, the difference between these two categories measures uh, the existence and the complexity of singularities in Z. So there was a suggestion, a definition uh, by Orlov, which uh, takes the quotient of one by the smaller one, and uh, this object uh, measures this, uh, the, 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 sh the shape of the singularities of Z. Okay, so this is uh, one of the objects we're going to be interested in. And, uh, and we will be interested in a particular case, a particular situation, where we have a scheme, a map, a function on, on, on the scheme x, a function f, and our z is going to be the zero locus of, of, of f. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, we not, in general, have uh, f is not flat, so this, drive to, uh, this, this product is going to be the drive fiber product. Um, and in this case, I mean, in particular, in when f is flat, this was uh, the original version proved by Orlov, this category of singularities admits a description in terms of matrix factorizations. So what are these matrix factorizations? So these are pairs of vector bundles on x and uh, maps, delta 0, delta 1, such that the composition is multiplication by f. Okay, so an example, in the most degenerated case, if we take f equals zero, we get exactly two periodic complexes. Do you have any assumption? Uh, or yeah, for the theorem of Orlov, it's, uh, f has to be flat. Flat. F. On x? Uh, ah, on x. Uh, uh, you need enough vector bundles on x? Uh, yeah, r r uh, regular, maybe, in this uh, in the original version. You need quasi projective? I mean, you need, uh, you need enough vector bundles? Uh? Yeah, yes, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. So, uh, in this case, for spec A with the function 0, we get two periodic complexes. So, uh, okay, so this is the case we are interested in. And then from another side, we have this, so we had this category of singularities, and another side, we have this vanishing cycle story. So, this is just a, a picture. So, you, it, the idea is that you want to study how, uh, you want to study the, 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 the singularities of a, of a fiber of a family on a certain point, and the idea is that you will study how 
cycles to generate as you approach this uh, particular fiber. Okay, so this is controlled by a sheaf, uh, I note uh, VF. And so the, the, the topic of this talk is how to relate this category sing Z to uh, this sheaf uh, VF. So uh, the, the, the relation between these two um, constructions, uh, we can, I mean, some people, uh, there are some people here that started to explore this relation. I'll just name uh, Professor Kashiwara, uh, Kapranov, Konsevich, uh, and then later Saba, uh, Cloud Saba, and uh, Saito. In, uh, in the case of uh, formal power series over C, uh, they give a relation between vanishing cohomology of F and the twisted form of the RAM cohomology, where we just twisted the HAM uh, differential by uh, the differential of F. Okay, so this is, so I'm, I'm not going to give a, a precise statement, I just want to picture the relation between the two. So, and uh, more recently we have results that use the previous one, relating the, the periodic homology, cyclic homology uh, of this category of singularities with the two periodic version of this twisted Durham complex. Okay, so there are these two uh, relations between uh, singularities and, and, um, and vanishing cycles. And uh, our result, together with Anthony Blanc, Bertrand Thorin and Gabriele Vizosi, tries to give uh, a motivic interpretation for, for these results independently without assumptions on the characteristics. So I will state the results. So uh, we take A, an excellent and excellent trait, uh, with an uniformizer pi, and then we take x over s, uh, a proper flat map with x regular. Okay? Yes? Uh, then we will identify two objects. So the first object is going to be a QLADIC realization of this DG category of singularities. So I'll have to explain what it, what it means to take a QLADIC realization of DG categories, in particular of this one. And uh, so this uh, construction, this realization, is isomorphic uh, at the Kyladic sheaf to a two-periodic version of this sheaf of vanishing cycles with respect to P. Okay? <coughs> so this is uh, uh, our result. And it will take me now some uh, minutes to get to each one of these uh, words. So, okay, so before starting a description of this uh, result, uh, I want to... Uh, uh, go back to Orlov's theorem um, for one reason. Because, so Orlov's equivalence is an equivalent of triangulated categories between Sing Z and MF. So for our uh, machine uh, to work, we, ne uh, we, we need to observe that in fact both sides carry DG enhancements and actually two periodic structures compatible with the DG enhancements. So we need a, a, a version of Orlov's equivalence that takes these uh, DG enhancements and two periodic structures in consideration. So we have to compare and say they are the same also. So, okay, we have this lemma, which is inspired by results of uh, Anatoly Pregel in uh, over C. And uh, essentially the lemma says that these two constructions uh, exist, uh, can be enhanced to, the, to DG categories. So there exist infinity functors going from pairs with x uh, flat over a and f arbitrary to DG categories. So here I mean the infinity category of DG categories, and I mean an infinity functor. So these two constructions uh, can be enhanced. Um, they are lax monoidal. So this category of pairs carries a, a tensor product given by convolution with the product on the fine line. So these maps are compatible with this tensor product. <laughs> and moreover, uh, there is a lax monoidal transformation from one to the other. So saying that the, these two uh, uh, DG enhancements are the same and the compatibility with the tensor product uh, also holds. In particular, if you take the pair uh, A with the function zero, you get sing of A zero and MF of A zero, which are both two periodic complexes. So in the end, you get uh, from this statement, from this machine, you get the two, uh, compatibility between the two periodic structures. Actually, I could also consider in general trait, it's there's no additional law how make convolution, additive convolution. 
is a function doing A1 of the, of the trade. Ah, A1 of the trade. Yes, f goes to A1 of the trade. Ah, I see, so it gets two part, kind of two, yeah. two dimensions. Yes. Okay. What is the meaning of lax in lax monoidal? If you, you so it's a right lax. Uh, there is a map from m, f, or sing of xf tensor sing of yg to sing of x times y over s, f tensor 1 plus 1 tensor g. Ah, that's <laughs> okay. 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 There is a map. There is a map. That's all the <laughs> okay. Yes. See, each one carries a lax structure. So maybe I could. Sorry. Ah. <coughs> So, and the same for sing. Okay? So, in particular, if you plug in uh, a0 on both sides, you get a monoidal structure on MF A0, which is two periodic complexes, and the same for Sing. And this, this, this uh, comparison map says that they are the same. Okay, in particular, we, if we restrict to good enough pairs, XF, uh, then on the homotopy category, so these are digit categories, on the homotopy categories, we, back, we get the equivalence of Orlov. But it's still for to return to because you have kind of two variables, you have trait and function, yeah? Mm -hmm. Should I take it? In this case, there is no trait. Just fix A a ring and you take function, you take schemes over A ah, yeah, and yeah. functions. Then you have the But A, ah, a is not a trait. No, A here is uh, just a ring. I take, I take I a base ring. Okay. 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 In the end, we're going to have to take a function over A and you compose with the function informizer and it goes to the A1 over the trait. Okay, so all this to say that I'm going to use, uh, we are going to use uh, sing and MF for the same thing over and over in this talk. Okay, so every time you see one or the other, it means the same. Okay, um, so now I will have to describe you what are these motives of DG categories. So I start with, uh, so the goal is to we have a DG category for A and I want to say what is the motive of A, okay? So the first thing uh, we have to say is what are motives, and in this talk, motives are going to be objects in the motivic stable homotopy category of morel vevotsky S H over A. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to describe what the construction. I'm just going to claim that this has a certain universal property. It's the universal place which, where you have an Isnevich excision, M1 invariance, and the tight twists are uh, invertible. Okay. So uh, why do we need this construction of SH? And the reason is because we need K-theory for this uh, whole story to hold. So um, in this construction, in SH, there is an object, BUA, which represents K-theory, homotopy invariant K-theory, meaning that if you take a smooth scheme and you send it to this category SH, then the ohms uh, become, with a shift, become uh, homotopy invariant K-theory. Is, is BUA connected? Uh, BUA is, no, it's not connective. It's not connective K-theory in the end. Is it, is it <coughs> maybe what I would call Z times BUA? Uh, over, over a field, yes. Yes, otherwise you have, uh, okay. So, so some remark is that this, this object reflects the projective bundle theorem, so it doesn't see tight twists. Okay, so uh, where the tight twist, I mean P1 over A with the infinity. Okay, so uh, we have this, this construction, we have this object BUA. So the construction of the motive of the DG category um, starts with the remark that the K theory of X is actually, is a construction that depends only on the category of perfect complexes on X. 
So the, the algebraic K theory is the Waldhausen construction on perfect complexes on X. So the construction we're going to do for any DG category is the following. We take a DG category and we're going to twist the K theory by tensoring with this DG category. So now the motive of X, the motive of T, sorry, is an object that represents the following thing. If maps from X or the ima image of X in SH to, to this guy is essentially the K theory twisted by T. Okay, so, so we, yes? What was it, SH? SH is this category of motives that has this property, this, 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 okay? So this object represents K theory of T. Uh, we can make this assignment something which is infinitive functorial and symmetric uh, lux monoidal also. So there are several ways to do this. We can do this strictly and then go to, to the infinity categories, or we can do a, a, a construction internal to the infinity category world. Okay, so we have this construction. To every t, we assign k theory twisted by t. And now two remarks. The first one is because of a localization for non-connected k theory, um, this construction preserves exact sequences of DG categories. Okay? And this is going to be important to us because uh, SYNC is defined by an exact sequences, coherent perf and SYNC. And the, the second uh, important feature is that this construction is lux monoidal. So on, the, on, the, on this side, you have the unit DG category. So its image uh, gives uh, BU because it's just k theory twisted by the trivial DG category. So uh, every, every motive of T, uh, for any T, the motive of T is going to carry a, a canonical action of BUA. So it's a module over BUA. OK, and uh, let me give you an example. This, this is just to, to mention that these uh, kind of uh, uh, constructions of motives of DG categories has been used by uh, an Anthony Blanc thesis to define uh, topological K theory of DG categories. Sorry, yes. What is? BUA is the object that re represents a multiple invariant K theory. Okay. Uh, yeah, Over uh, BU, okay. BU, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, sorry, okay, it's a notation. Okay, so, uh, so now let's use this. Uh, we have this formalism. Let's use it to compute the motive of SYNC, PERF, and DBCO. Okay, so the first step. We start with the scheme over A, uh, quasi-compact, quasi-separated, and then we have the scheme over A, so we have the category of perfect complexes on the scheme is a DG category over A, so we can take its motive by this construction. We are twisting K-theory by the perf X. Uh, at the same time, we also have a motive over X, uh, which is BUX, which represents K-theory over X, and because we have push forwards uh, in this, uh, for this construction of motives, the, the six operations, then we can take the image of BUX and this leaves over S. And the claim is that these two constructions identify. And uh, the reason is because just uh, by, by a junction, we see that both represent K theory twi twisted by perf X, by X actually. So this is the first step. Second identification we will need uh, is the following. So you take a scheme over X, over S, sorry, and uh, we take an open and a closed complement, and then you have a localization sequence of motives. And uh, so you start with BUX, and then you can push it and uh, push it, uh, pull it back, shriek to, to, to Z and push it forward, the same over U. And, uh, and the claim is that the first term uh, on the left is essentially the motive of uh, DBCO. And the reason for this is because we, were, I forgot to mention, we have to assume that X is regular in this case, so that K theory becomes G theory. And then uh, in this case, both X is regular, so U is also regular, and then K theory is G theory. And because of quill localization theorem and Debussage for the, for the closed immersion, uh, these two guys identify with the G theory with support. Okay, so we have an identification of the motive of DBCO Z, and we also can describe the motive of perf X, in particular of perf Z. It's the same thing, it's just something that lives over, Z, over S. Okay, so the first step now is we go back to this context where we want to work. So we have X a scheme, and we have a function, and we take the derived fiber product. So in this case, the derived fiber product, I0 is an LCE map, so I is also going to be LCI. 
Okay? So in this context, we can put together two exact sequences. So the top exact sequence is the one coming from the definition of sing. Uh, co, perf, and sing. Okay? And the construction of this motif preserves exact sequences. At the same time, because of the identification we just described, the term in the middle identifies with the criteria with support. So we also have a localization sequence in the middle. And because we are now in this context uh, where we have something of a family over a one and we take the fiber over zero, the map is LCI, so the inclusion of perfect complexes on Z uh, preserves, uh, perf sorry, the, the inclusion of Z on X preserves perfect complexes. So we have this map at the level of perfect complexes, uh, which essentially makes the diagram commute because it's also the map that uh, uh, is the first map on the vertical. Okay, so we have these two uh, exact sequences, and the claim is that this map here, the i lower star, is uh, homotopic to zero. And the reason is just because uh, by derived base change, uh, we have to compute the, the push forward i zero lower star, and this is also homotopic to zero because it's just the inclusion of the point zero in A1, and we have the resolution of A over AT given by AT multiplication by T it goes to AT and then A. So in K-theory, this becomes zero. So I have a question. Uh, by curiosity, uh, if you write the co-localization sequence, I mean, to replace I over strict by uh, I over star, yes. what do you get? You cannot relate it to Z, to db z Because you db z is really K-theory with super. What, what do you get? I mean, can you identify the category that you get? Ah. Uh, I would think you just get uh, I have to think a bit, sorry. Uh, okay. So out of this, because this map is no longer topic, what we get in the end is just, so these are uh, triangles. So we get a, a triangle that goes from the co-kernel of the first map to the co-kernel of the second to the co-kernel of the third. So MZ, and here we have this guy here is the co-kernel of the I lower star because it's no longer topic and then uh, we get the last one. Okay, so we have this uh, exact triangle of motives, and this is what we're gonna use to compare to vanishing cycles in the end, because the two are gonna be defined by uh, uh, an exact triangle, okay? Um, okay, so now uh, we're gonna take the Q-Aladic realization of this triangle. So, and here we need to fix X, an excellent trait, and uh, we take a closed point and a generic point, and we have this q realization for schemes over S of finite type. So in this case, we can go from SH, this construction of SH, SH we can tensor by Q, and then we can go to uh, q sheaves. So q sheaves here, I mean the inconstructible l sheaves, and then you invert L. So this is the construction of Deling and Ekdal, uh, which we can do in this infinity categorical sense. So there is this realization, and the point is that uh, because of works of Ayub, uh, Gaber, uh, Sisinski, Deglise, and Ivora, we have this compatibility with six operations and taste twists, meaning the six operations exist on, on, every, uh, on all the, the terms at er, er, every step, and the maps are compatible. So, okay, so we have this realization, so we can send the exact sequences to Eladic sheaves, and in particular, we can compute this elastic realization of the rational uh, uh, B, BUX uh, spectrum. And uh, by theorem of uh, Ryu, uh, this uh, realization identifies with a, a two periodic uh, object, which is the Q elastic sheaf uh, QLX, twisted uh, by the roots of unit E. I and shifted by two I and the sum over all I. So this object we're going to denote as QL beta for uh, the fact that it is a free infinity algebra. It's free infinity because uh, RL, so sorry, it's an infinity algebra because BUX is an infinity algebra. RL is monoidal, so the image is uh, an algebra and it's state two periodic. Uh, okay, so we're going to use this notation. 
And the consequence is, is that the sequence we had before, now we can realize it, we get an elodic sheaf, which is also too periodic, meaning that the first sequence before realization was a sequence of BU modules. So now what you get is a sequence of RLBU modules, which are two periodic objects. OK, so let's stop here for a while. And let's go to vanishing cycles now, the other side of the story. So in this case, I have to fix a bunch of uh, stuff. So I have S, a trait. I fix a close point, a generic point. Uh, I'm going to fix a separable closer of K, uh, the small K. I take S bar, the strict initialization along this point, and, and then I'm going to have a maximum unified extension of BK, and I take a separable closure, and I get this eta bar. OK, so this is the, the context. And in this context, um, we have an exact se uh, sequence of Galois groups, the Galois group of eta bar, the Galois group of sigma bar, and the inertia group is the kernel. OK, and in this context, uh, we can define vanishing cycles. So we start with x over s. And then we can pull back, uh, make the pullback to, to s bar. And, uh, and we can define vanishing cycles as follows. So we take a sheep over uh, QL sheep over X, and then we can restrict uh, E. We can restrict E to the closed fiber, sigma bar. We can also restrict it, uh, pull it back to, the, to X eta bar, the universal cover, and then push it forward. And uh, we have an adjunction map between these two constructions. So the middle one is uh, the construction of nearby cycles. So the, the, we complete the triangle, we get the definition of vanishing cycles. And all these uh, leaves in sheaves over sigma bar, which are Galois eta uh, equivariant. OK, so this is the definition. Uh, so in particular, we can pick the sequence over e, x eta, e, sigma bar and push it forward to sigma bar. OK, so now we have a sequence of Galois uh, e, uh, eta bar equivariant objects in sigma bar. OK, so now we will apply this to a particular uh, sheaf E, which is the two periodic sheaf over X, OK, which is the realization of BU. So in this case, uh, I'll write the sequence just in a different way. Instead of writing vanishing cycles as a cofiber, I'll write it as a fiber. So we shift it by minus 1. And we have this sequence. Uh, which is, again, Galois eta equivariant. And we have uh, uh, compatible action, uh, two periodic action of sigma bar. Um, OK. So uh, we have this sequence. And now we can take uh, inertia invariance, meaning we have the inertia living in the Galois of eta bar. So we can take homotopy fixed points with respect to this inertia. OK. So we get a sequence of homotopy fixed points of the previous one. Uh, the point is that th the sequence lives in the same place, but we have a compatible action of Galois invariance of uh, homotopy fixed points of eta bar. Okay? This guy is a trivial action, but uh, the, the taking homotopy fixed points will give back the cohomology uh, of inertia. So in the end, we get an action of the tensor product of the two uh, Algebras, the QL beta and QL uh, in inertia invariance. OK? So uh, let me now state the comparison. Uh, we have, and the comparison is the following. So we take X, uh, S is a, an excellent uh, Ancelian trait. We take P, pi in the uniformizer, and we take uh, P, uh, a scheme proper and flat of finite type over S with X regular. So in this case, we're going to have our map P that lives over the trait. And then we compose with the uniformizer, which you see as a map to A1 over S. So everything lives over S in the end. So um, the point is that in this case where P is flat, the fiber X0 is automatically uh, underived. Okay. So in this case, the theorem is the following. So under this hypothesis, there is a canonical uh, Galois equivariant equivalence of hypercomologies between the, the hypercomology of the realization of Sing and the, these uh, homotopy invariant uh, points 
on uh, uh, vanishing cycles uh, with respect to beta, QL beta. Okay, induced by an equivalence between the two exact sequences we just constructed, one for sync, one for uh, vanishing cycles. So uh, I will try to sketch uh, the proof of this uh, statement. So, um, okay. So the proof goes as follows. First, we reduce to S a strictly local uh, trait, and then we do the comparison of the two sequences. So these are the two sequences we have to compare, one coming from sing, one coming from vanishing cycles. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to identify the terms of the sequences, and then we have to say that the maps, the sequences come from the same, have the same origin. So the maps are the same also. So let's do the first the strictly local case. So in the strictly local case, we started the sequence of vanishing cycles. Um, we have to compute first uh, inertia invariance of the nearby cycles, which is the last term. Okay? And this computation, just by Galois descent, in the strictly local case, uh, I mean, in general, this computation would give the J tilde a ramified, but uh, uh, in the strictly local case, this construction just gives J. So taking homotopy invariant points just gives back uh, pullback, push forward straight on the on on the on X. Okay, so this is just the first computation by Galois descent and the projective uh, uh, proper base change. Okay, so now comes the more uh, uh, subtle point, which is the identification of the term in the middle. Okay, so we have to compute homotopy invariant points for this push forward, okay? So the first thing we should notice is that the action that exists here is actually the trivial action of I, because this is just pulled ba pull back to the, to the special fiber. So by a base change formula, this homotopy uh, invariant fixed points is just the object itself tensored by homotopy invariant fixed points of QL. So we have to compute homotopy invariant fixed points of QL and the, the computation uh, can be done as follows. So first we observe that QL uh, for sigma is essentially the image of uh, is um, QL, uh, so it's lower, uh, is, it is the pullback of, uh, so, sorry, it's nearby cycles for eta, okay? So uh, homotopy, so when we pass to homotopy fixed points, um, these things are still uh, equivalent. So in the end, the point is that now the computation is reduced to the previous computation, which is a Galois descent statement that says that this is just a pullback push forward on eta and sigma. Okay, so now we have to compute this, and this by purity for the trait uh, just gives back QL plus QL with a tight twist, shifted by minus one. I think I'm not uh, an author of the purity for the trait. I mean. Because that's your quick purity for, from the simulation rate, though it's... Uh, I'm not, uh, I didn't, I mean, this was an old... Yes, in, in SGA, probably, yeah. yes. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, the point here is that this uh, construction, because we are working in this infinity categorical setting, uh, gives back a knee algebra structure on these homotopy invariance fixed points because homotopy invariance fixed points is a lux monodal construction. So we get uh, that the algebra structure on homotopy fixed points is induced by this uh, I upper star, J lower star, uh, which is also lux monoidal, is induced <coughs> by the trivial algebra structure on Q et eta. Okay, so by transfer we get an algebra structure on homotopy fixed points. And this is going to be important to us. So, uh, so now let me say uh, these two periodicity. Uh, uh, an important uh, fact is that we have these two periodicity, bot periodicity. When so when we get something twisted by minus one, minus one, which is what we got from the previous computation, you can twist everything, and uh, minus one, minus one disappears. You just get one on the other term. Okay. So uh, we have. We can do this computation. So the, pre the, the, the sequence that defines vanishing cycles just becomes this sequence, which uh, uh, has the same objects as the sequence coming from Sing. And now we have to identify the maps. Okay. 
So how do we compare the two maps? So let me go back to the previous sequence that was uh, defining uh, uh, the motive of Singh. So we got it from this combination of these two triangles. The point is that as this map here is non homotopic, as we saw before, uh, it comes the, 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 the map in the, the first horizontal map actually factors through the through the shift minus one of uh, of the last term. Okay, so in this case, uh, this map theta by both periodicity, we can identify the, the, this previous uh, shift by minus one by a tight twist and a shift by one. So what we get is a k-theoretic analog of the cycle glass map of the pair Z and X, uh, as described by SJ4 and half and by Gebhardt. So uh, we get this class, and I have to describe now uh, the realization of this class and what's the role of this class. So, so in SJ4, or uh, also Gebhardt's uh, proof of uh, purity, we have this cycle class map which we can see as a class in H1 of eta with respect to a uh, tight uh, object, which is sent by the exact sequence to uh, H2 of L of S. Okay? And the image of this gives uh, the first term class of the conormal sheave, uh, the conormal bundle, sorry, conormal bundle of sigma in S. So the point is that if we start with this class, we can pull it back to X eta, so it leaves over eta, we go back to X eta, then we can tensor with, t, uh, with beta, okay, we get a map of two periodic complexes, of two periodic sheaves, and by a junction, this gives us a map as the one described there, okay? And, uh, and this map extends to, by using universal property of uh, free modules, so because this, this guy here is an algebra, we get a map of uh, P lower star B U X zero modules, okay? So the claim, is that uh, this map we get here is exactly the elliptic realization of the map we got before on motives. Okay, so we had the map theta on motives, you realize it, and you get you get this map on uh, of elliptic sheaves. And the reason for this is purity and the compatibility with the six operations. Okay, so this map that we get from the sequence sing comes from the cycle class map. So uh, at the same time. We had, so uh, this QL homotopy invariant points comes with a canonical algebra structure, as I, I tried to, to explain, and which is induced by this uh, functor, I upper star J lower star, from the algebra structure on QL eta. So the, uh, the point is that now uh, this homotopy fixed point is equivalent to this uh, QL plus QL minus one shifted by minus one. And the, the claim is that the multiplication by this element of theta degree minus one minus one, uh, we can also see it as a map like this. And the claim, uh, so following the results of uh, rapport zinc and Illusi, Laszlo, Orgogozo, and um, Garber's, Garber's uh, uniformization, we get that this map here is essentially induced by the same class map, cycle class map, under this pullback, push forward. Okay, so the, the point is that these two constructions, the construction of uh, homotopy fixed points and the construction of vanishing cycles and the construction of sync are both coming from this cycle <coughs> class map. <coughs> so in the end, we managed to use this to compare the two sequences. So the two sequences are induced by this class theta. So in the end, what we get is that so the sequences are, we get an equivalent between the two sequences, so the two terms uh, sorry, the two terms are going to be uh, equivalent, okay? So this is how we, would, we deduce the theorem. So step six is a reduction to a general excellent trait, so this was a strictly local case. Uh, so, so we need to use Galois descent for sync, and we need to use the compatibility of this QL realization of digit categories with push forwards, okay? So, but I will not uh, go more on details on that. So just some concluding uh, remarks. So we get this um, identification. Uh, from one side, you have the motive of sync. From another side, you have this motive, the two periodic version of vanishing cycles, <coughs> multiple fixed points. So now you have something uh, 
cuties that we have to, uh, so I will explain in a while. So from one side, you're going to have an action because the function we constructed sync was lux monoidal. So we have an action of sync s0, okay? And sync s0, we can compute by the exact sequence we, sorry, the motive of sync f0. If we take the, the exact sequence we had, where we had sync and some, some other terms, you can show that this motive is essentially QL beta plus QL beta with the tape twist. Okay, so because the construction is monoidal <coughs> and sync zero is a unit, this object uh, um, inherits a, a, a symmetric monoidal, uh, sorry, an infinity algebra structure. Okay, at the same time, on the other side, we also have uh, an infinity algebra structure. So the claim is that these two, uh, the, the, the equivalent we had before constructed from the sequences is compatible with these uh, infinity algebra structures. Okay, so just another uh, uh, consequence of this theorem is that uh, we managed to construct a Schoen character from the K-theory of uh, MF to uh, this uh, cohomology of vanishing cycles, the two-periodic cohomology. And, um, and uh, that's it. So in the next lecture, uh, Gabriele Vezzozzi will give, uh, uh, will explain how to use these uh, results to approach uh, Bloch's uh, conductor conjecture. So uh, thank you very much. result is about the invariance thing of the inertia of vanishing cycles. Why don't you formulate it in terms of 10 vanishing cycles? Oh, I don't understand, sorry. Why don't you formulate the result in terms of 10 vanishing cycles? Uh, you mean because the, the action of the inertia factors... At the end you are taking just the invariance in the inertia. Yes. So it looks like it's more reasonable maybe to approach the problem via the 10 vanishing cycles. The 10 vanishing cycles are much simpler to understand. But in this case, so when I take the inertia invariance, uh, the action of the inertia will factor through the, the, through the 10 in inertia. Yeah. Right? So in some sense, it's the question about ah, the way you formulate your statement about vanishing cycles. It looks like it's more a statement about 10 vanishing cycles. More than, than I think. Think the, I think the state the, the should be a more general statement. Maybe you agree. I don't know. Uh, should be that before taking a elliptic realization, the motive of seeing should be the same ah, thing yes. as a motivic uh, tame uh, vanishing cycle to value. Yes. Right? In some sense. So what is the obstruction? What? What is the obstruction of doing this? At the, it was my question. Oh, okay. <coughs> uh, the obstruction is time. Uh, <laughs> and also that uh, more mathematically, uh, the construction of Ayub is not a motive, it's a, it's a diagram of motive. Yeah. So you, can, you have to yeah. make sense of this, but I think uh, this is what... Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you just consider the time, yeah, but yeah, it's a matter of time, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> if you I understood the question now. If you just consider time, you can do this in motives, at least in et al. motives. Yeah. Yes.